Psalm 43 had a question coming out of chapter 7, number 95. And here we were told that uh, an air service or an air conditioner technician was going to service some air conditioning units. We were told, well, actually, let me back this up into, I can hear the, the variable in this problem is service times, right? And the units are hours. So something I think of is, okay, I have a continuous numerical variable. And when I think about making the, the, or putting together the info for the population distribution, it said that the average time it took a, a service job was about one hour with a standard deviation of one hour. Now, I wasn't given any information on the shape. If you look at the phrasing in 95, it doesn't say anything about normal, doesn't say anything about uniform. So I'm going to leave it as a question mark, which is fine. But then the next thing we read is that you're going to take a simple random sample of 70 units. So I'm going to take a sample and I've got my sample size of 70 units. So as soon as I hear that, I want to think, okay, maybe I'm going to be on a sampling distribution. All right. It depends on where the question goes, but it's a, it's a good, there's a good chance that's going to happen. So you got to think, okay, am I going to be on an X bar or am I going to be on the P prime version? Well, because I have a numerical variable, I'm going to be looking at averages. So let me erase the P prime shenanigans and let's talk about what that means. We have some rules for an X bar, right? We've got a mu and a sigma over square root N and a capital N. So we've got some rules about Hey, if you know your population standard deviation, it's going to be the same for your sampling distribution. If you know your popu oh, I think I said standard deviation. I said I should say if you know your population mean, it's going to be the same for your sampling distribution. If you know your population standard deviation, we're just going to take that bad boy and divide by the square root of n to get the standard error. And the big one that we're going to talk about is how and when am I allowed to put that capital N there? All right. So let's take a look at what we got for the population. Let me delete my little notes here. All right, and here, again, keep in mind, this is my population distribution. And let's start to build this sampling distribution. All right, so actually I'll put here, this is my sampling distribution. And distribution, again, funny, funny word, or big word, I should say, for graph. That's what we're talking about as we move through here. Okay, so let me, let me color code this so I am consistent. You see that the population mean was one? the sampling distribution's mean was one. All right, we see that the population distribution had a standard deviation of one. And then I take that one and I divided it by the square root of 70, right? That was the rule for our population, or excuse me, our, our standard error. Now, the, the N, the capital N, the big one, how do I get to put, and let me highlight this better in blue, when do I get to put this capital N here? There are two versions in mean land. So either your population distribution is stated to be normal or the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. So let's, let's evaluate both of these. All right, so if I look at my population distribution, all right, was it stated to be normal, right? Look, there's a question mark right there. So I do not get the first assumption being met. So I don't get to put the capital N on this sampling distribution just yet. But if I look at my sample size, and I'll go over to pink, right? My sample size, if we remember, it was 70. 70 is greater than 30, all right? So because 70 is greater than 30, I get to put the capital N there. And why that's important is this allows me to use normal CDF. Let me put this, I'm running out of room. So here I can use normal CDF and inverse norm, depending on what the question asks of me. All right, and that'll help me calculate probabilities and percentiles. All right, so I actually, I couldn't calculate a probability or a percentile on my population distribution because I don't know its shape, but because of the central limit theorem, because I know this, this sampling distribution is approximately normal, I get a lot more options on my sampling distribution. All right, so the last part of that sentence, or that last, yeah, the last question technically in 95 says, you plan to budget an average of 1.1 hours per technician to complete the work. Will this be enough time? So you hear average of 1.1 hours. And I want to point out the key phrase here. And the key phrase is average. All right, because it says average, you're going to be on this X bar distribution. Right? If, it, if that word average wasn't there, then we'd actually go back to this population distribution and we wouldn't be able to do the problem because we, we don't know the shape. But because I'm looking at the average of 1.1 hours, I set up my probability statement, letter, symbol, number, and look at your letter. It doesn't say X. It says X bar. That's key. 
All right, I'll be looking for that when we um, get to our next exam. So we got normal CDF, right? We got low, high, mean, standard error. And you see that probability is pretty high, 80%. That's, that's not rare. That's actually a good chance things are going to happen. So that's why I say it might be enough time. There is a 20% chance it won't happen, but 80% of the time it does. So that's a, a bet I'm willing to take. And before we get out of here, let's just look at our, our distribution, right? So this is the graph version of our sampling distribution, all right? This is me just writing it up in symbols. This is the graph. Take a look at the x-axis, or technically the x-bar axis, right? You see the word average here, right? On the y-axis, you see probability of x-bar. Yeah, so I've got all of this properly labeled, scaled, and you can see that my number, and actually let me highlight this. I'll, I'll pick, what's the color we haven't used? Orange. You see my 80% here matches the 80% of the graph that I shaded. So that's looking pretty good. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.